Our worship theme this month is love, and we're starting off today by talking about love for everyone. There are many ancient Greek words for love, and today's subject is agape love. This is an overflowing, all-encompassing love for everyone. The word agape was used by the early Christian church to describe a perfect love for all humanity, but it is not confined to that religious tradition. I've chosen to use the word agape today very intentionally because I would like to claim it for us as Unitarian Universalists. Many world religions have some corollary to agape love. We just engaged in the Buddhist practice of metta, sending loving kindness into the world. There's also the Jewish concept of tikkun olam, which means healing the world. It has one foot rooted in love and the other in justice. Most religious traditions have some kind of idea of loving people at the core, and ours is no different. As Unitarian Universalists, we are called to love people, and they call it as grounded in our principles that affirm the worth and dignity of all people, to seek justice in human relationships, they call us to value our differences. We call that agape. <coughs> As I've looked for ways to illustrate agape love, I've come up with a, a few examples. The first two are a little silly, but I hope that they will get us to a, a place of a deeper understanding of agape love, this love for everyone. Eleanor took my first one, it's about puppies. <laughs> <laughs> If you've had or if you've known a good family dog, then you have some idea of agape love. I currently live with a Labrador Retriever who's almost two years old, and every time I walk in the door, it's like it's 1972 and I'm David Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> she acts like she has not seen me in years, and, and this is the case if I've been gone for a few days, a few hours, a few minutes, <laughs> doesn't matter. The good dog has never been more happy and full of love than in the moment than in their person, or sometimes any person. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very close experience, close to agave love, but not quite it. The next slightly silly example that I have is that of the second grade Valentine's Day party. Yeah, by this age, they can pick out their own Valentine's cards, they can write their own message, but they're also young enough that they still want to send a Valentine to everyone in their class. And if you've ever had the pleasure of sitting in on the second day Valentine's Day party, you have known an overflowing, abundant love. Everyone gets a card. Everyone wants to be best friends. Everyone is everyone else's Valentine for the day. And there are cookies and candy and cupcakes and everything. And everyone is just tanked up on this special rocket fuel of serotonin and sugar. <laughs> and it is love that cannot be contained. And that is also close, very close to agape love. But not quite it. Both of these examples are very full of love, but they fall short on being true agape. The trouble with the first example, the one about the dog, is that it is about a dog. <laughs> and agape love is the love between humans for humans, so the dog is a good example, but not quite it. And the trouble with the second example is that it is fleeting. It is so short. In the days following, or hours following the second grade Valentine's Day party, the sugar starts to wear off, and the relationships go back to normal. As a culture, we've set aside Valentine's Day as a reminder to be more loving to each other. Our children really take to that idea, and sometimes we as adults do too. That day is great, but that type of joy is not meant to last. Although the second grade Valentine's Day party has the right tone, it does not have the right pace. Agape love is more mature and sure-footed than that party. Where then can we turn for an example of true agape love? Well, every so often, a person comes along who can provide an example 
a person capable of unbridled love that is human and real and sustained. This congregation was blessed to have such a person early in our history, and this is my third and really only true example of agape love. Her name was Rebecca Peterson, and she was the wife of BUC's first full-time minister, the Reverend Walter Peterson. Can I just ask how many people here had the pleasure of knowing Rebecca? Great. Good. Walter was called to serve the church in 1958. He was a warm man who was known for stimulating sermons and an unassuming demeanor. He seemed poised to do great things here, but unfortunately he suffered an untimely death within the first year of his tenure. Our nascent congregation was rocked by this loss. We got through that time of drawing on our history as a self-guided congregation and through the love and service of Walter's widow, Rebecca. Rebecca stayed with this congregation for the next 35 years, during which time she was known for her generosity of spirit and her social justice work in the community. Now, I did not have the pleasure of getting to know Rebecca personally, but I have heard some stories from her friends, including Ed Charles and Pat Schwing. Rebecca was truly a special person who exemplified what it is to love everyone with agape love, that overflowing, all-encompassing love for all people. Rebecca was most known for her work with Focus Hope. She was on the ground floor as Father William Cunningham and Eleanor Josias founded that organization 50 years ago, which was about 10 years after Walter's untimely death. Focus Hope began as a response to the 1967 Detroit riots. Father Cunningham and Mrs. Josias wanted to do something to reduce racism and discrimination in Detroit through the power of love. And this was their mission statement. March 8, 1968, recognizing the dignity and the beauty of every person, we pledge intelligent and practical action to overcome racism, poverty, and injustice, to build a metropolitan community where all people may live in freedom, harmony, trust, and affection, black and white, yellow, brown, and red, from Detroit and its suburbs of every economic status, national origin, religious persuasion, we join in this covenant. So there's some dated language there, but this mission statement was positively radical and visionary for its time. Focus Hope was founded to create loving, equitable relationships between people of all races and across socioeconomic status. Soon after their founding, they realized that the way to equity was job training. They hoped to train people of color, specifically young black men, to become mechanics, which quickly evolved into a training program for engineers. And today, there are Focus Hope engineering graduates working in the auto industry, in the Pentagon, and many points in between. Focus Hope also began caring for the practical needs of people in their job training program by providing food assistance and childcare. That's the intelligent and practical action that their mission statement promises. Work like this is love in action. And Rebecca Peterson was a community spokesperson for Focus Hope. She was an ambassador of sorts. She was known for wearing a Focus Hope pin to church every Sunday, a pin that wore the symbol of a white hand and a black hand reaching for each other. She was also known for her faithful participation in the annual Focus Hope Walkathon that was called the March for Hope. This is a 10 mile trek up Woodward Avenue, and Rebecca would gather pledges from BUC and from the community for her participation. She made that walk annually for approximately 25 years. In her 90s, she began to fall behind the pace of the other marchers, but she refused to accept a ride because people had pledged for her to walk, and so she was going to walk. There was one year that she was pushed in a wheelchair by her friends on the walk. And in her final year, others walked on her behalf. Rebecca was dedicated to the March for Hope because she believed in the mission of Focus Hope and the power of love 
to transform the world. Rebecca Peterson was also dedicated to helping children in need. I understand that she also volunteered with an organization called Project Friendship, which supported kids in Pontiac. And she tutored children, especially those with learning disabilities. And she did so on a sliding scale that often slid to zero. She loved people. She loved kids. She loved PUC. Rebecca Peterson wanted to bring people together for a more peaceful future. And she lived a life of service to this congregation and the wider community. And she did that because love compelled her. Love was above her, below her, behind her, inside for every cell of her, to echo this morning's second reading. Her work was tireless. And it was fueled not by obligation and not by attention seeking, just love. This kind of love, this agape love, this overflowing perfect love for everyone is a verb. It is something that you do, something that you are, rather than something that one has. Rebecca did what she did because it was the only thing to do. Her work and her life exemplified our Unitarian Universal values. She lived our principles and she remains an inspiration for our congregation today. She set a standard that I think we're still reaching for, even those of us who didn't know her. When someone has a powerful influence in an organization, it gets into that organization's DNA, for better or for worse. Rebecca was a part of the life of this congregation for half of its existence. We're turning 70 in September, and she was an active member here for 35 years. She left an indelible mark that urges us to a life of loving service, a life of agape love. I am curious about people who are able to love so fully. I want to know more about them because I want to be able to be more like them. And something that I've noticed about people like Rebecca Peterson over the years is a type of reciprocity. She was deeply loving she was deeply loved for it. The more people like this love, the more they are loved, the more love they have to give, and so on it goes. People who embody a God they love do not live in isolation. They do not have a martyr syndrome. They are able to accept love as much as they are able to give love. There is reciprocity here. The second quality that I've noticed in people who embody a God they love is modesty. This is where our example of the dog really falls short. <laughs> <laughs> the love of a good dog is effusive and unabashed, and it is sometimes a little too much. <laughs> and people who really have a God they love tend to be centered. They are very grounded people, and they don't make a big deal of their love and their service, even though it is, in fact, a big deal. People who live out agape love do remarkable things in the most unremarkable ways. They understand what needs to be done, and they just do it. They just do it. They don't seek attention or praise or accolades and are often taken aback when it is suggested that what they have done is worthy of mention. I'm sure that there are many more qualities shared by people with an abundance of the God they love. But the final one that I'll lift up today is steadfastness. Our second grade Valentine's party truly fails us on this account. <laughs> that is a flash in the pan. But when a person really, truly has a God they love, it is steady, dependable. You know it'll be there. Remember that Rebecca Peterson was a life, part of the life of this congregation and a part of Focus Hope from their founding until her death. Her dedication for this congregation and for Focus Hope was unwavering. And as I listened to the stories about her, I never heard a word about the time that she doubted. I did not hear about the time that she was unsure of her work at BUC or at Focus Hope. 
She was steadfast in her love for us. She was steadfast in her love for the downtrodden. Much of who we are as a congregation is owed to Rebecca Peterson, and we still have much to learn from her memory. Her good work and her ability to love and to be loved is in our organizational DNA. It is part of our inheritance that we can claim as members and friends of this congregation. I am confident that we can each embody the love that she had for us and I'm sure that she would be proud of us in the work that we do today in the name of love. Whether it be a grand scale social justice project or visiting somebody who's sick, or providing a ride to church or to the doctor. May we be further inspired to continue her legacy with our own agape love, an overflowing, abundant love for all people, a love that we are as able to receive as we are to give, a love that is grounded in humility and buoyed by our steadfast commitments to each other. Maybe so. Amen. And blessed be.